How's it going guys, Jake here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bibliocraft mod. Now this mod adds a bunch of different items, tools, and furniture blocks to your Minecraft world that all have a bunch of interesting models, abilities, and just mechanics. So let's get started. So starting here with the lighting portion of the Bibliocraft mod, we've got a couple of different lamps and lanterns to make. Starting off with a fancy lantern. To make this, you're going to take four glass pane, two gold ingots, two glowstone dust, and a torch to get just the basic white candle. Then to make the iron version, very simple, all you do is replace the gold with the iron. Now to make any different colors of this, you're just going to take whatever color of lantern, you can see it's going through from purple to pink, all that, and then you place it next to the dye that you're wanting to change the lantern to. So for pink, you just place the pink dye with whatever lantern. That's the same for all of these lamps and lanterns. Then next we got a fancy lamp, and to make this you're going to take a glowstone with two glass, two gold ingots, and two gold nuggets. And then obviously to make the iron one, you're just going to replace the gold with iron. So I'm going to go ahead and take these basic lamps for you to see. And now these lights or these different colored lamps, they don't produce that color of light, they just produce the normal white light in Minecraft like a torch would. It just looks a little bit different with the hooding of the lamp. So I'm going to go ahead and place these areas down. You can see I've got this kind of dark area here so you can see how it affects the lighting. So lantern's very simple, you're just going to place it down and it'll produce light. And you can see that it is because when I destroy these, it gets very shady and dark underneath here. Then with this lamp, I can place it on the ceiling, and as you can see, it's just hanging over and giving us some light. And now you can use a hand drill and a screw gun, and these will be used several times to either change the position of items or things that you set down, or to connect a few. So to make the hand drill, you're just gonna take a button, a stick, and an iron ingot. And to make the screw gun, you're going to take orange terracotta, a button, iron ingot, and a block of redstone. So if I go ahead and right click on this, it makes a little sound effect and it will position it depending on the wall that's next to it. So I can make it go from this wall to the top one so you can see it's a hanging down light. And if it's on the ground, you can see that it kind of looks like a normal lamp as you can see it's hanging over. And then I can go ahead and right click and it would change it to all the different positions but of course it looks a little weird since it's not actually connected to any blocks. And now this also works with the lantern as well as if I set it down, you can see that it does have different positions. You have it where it'd be on the wall or where it would be hanging from the ceiling. So very two cool types of lighting that is added to your world. Now we're moving on to some more furniture and this will be very similar to like Mr. Crayfish more furniture mod because I've just kind of shown what all the different types look like so that you can see them. And now to make the different ones, it's pretty self-explanatory if you just change that type of wood to the other one in order to be able to make that type of furniture. So I'm just gonna be going over the oak types of furniture. But now with almost every furniture, there's also a framed type of furniture. And this will be used with a particular furniture which will allow you to change this uh, into different types and I'll show you that in just a second. But to make this, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be framing sheets and framing boards. And to make a framing sheet, you're gonna need to take any type of wood with a framing saw. And to make the saw, it's just two of any wood with three iron ingots. So that's how you make the sheets, you'll get two of those. But to make the boards, you're gonna take a sheet and then put a framing saw to that. Now I'm not gonna go over every single framing furniture recipe because that would just take way too long. But it is very simple to follow, just like if you were to make a different type of bookcase, you just simply replace that type of wood. With the frame bookcase, all of the framing boards would replace the slabs and the framing sheets will replace the full blocks. So as you can see, if I go over to the oak bookcase, I've got the slabs in the middle and the blocks on the side, and it looks the exact same. So if you just take and replace the types of wood with those pieces of slabs being boards and blocks being sheets, then you'll be able to make these very similar to if you were to change it and to make a different type of furniture. So now let's get started with the oak bookcase, which you've now seen quite a few times. It's just simply six wood planks with three wooden slabs. And then we have a creative bookcase, and this is just filled with random books. It's for creative mode only. We have an oak shelf. This is six wooden slabs with a wooden blank. Then we've got a oak furniture paneler, and this is mainly what the framed furniture will be used in. And this will be two iron ingots, a framing saw, three wooden slabs, and three wooden planks. We have a framed chest, and this is a oak wood label surrounded with oak wood planks. Then we have a fancy sign, and this is a label with a sign and a paper. Then we have a fancy workbench. This is a feather, crafting table, ink sack, a bookcase, and for the oak one, you're gonna need the oak bookcase, and then five wooden slabs. 
And then finally we have a potion shelf. Now to make this, it's gonna be six wooden slabs, two oak planks, and a glass bottle. So starting over here with the bookcase, if we go ahead and set it down, then if we right click on it, it'll give you two bars of inventory space. And now in this place, you can of course then place books. And you can only place books, as you can see I can't place this birch wooden planks in there. And then, you know, if I place it here and there, you can then see that that corresponds with the position on the bookshelf. Now the color of the book or the shininess of the book, that won't change anything. It'll just give you this type of look depending on the position. And then the creative bookcase, it's pretty simple. It'll just fill with a bunch of random books. And now these are, you know, just a bunch of uh, novels, I guess, from just random people. And so you can use these, read these, whatever you would like. And there are a ton of these in this mod as they're used in many different ways or just in creative mode. Then for our shelf, if we go ahead and set it down, we can place things on it like this. So if you place anything that has or produces a light source on the bookshelf, it uh, won't actually shine out and produce light. It will instead just kind of glitch out a little bit and uh, light up the bottom and top wooden planks so it doesn't really look that good, but you can still place it on there. And then if you want to take things off, you can look at the object and just right click and it'll come off. or you can just, well, right click and place it back on. So you don't have to open up the GUI, which you either do by looking at empty space or just uh, by the wood as such. But that is the oak shelf. And next we have the furniture paneler and now it has a pretty nice uh, model. And if we go ahead and open it up, this is where we'll use the frame furniture. If we go ahead and set that here and we place what type of wood we're wanting to change it to, we will then be able to make that type of thing so this is the frame furniture paneler so we'll be able to make a birched furniture paneler now I won't say that but that is what it is as you can see if I set it down it is that lighter color and it does the exact same thing so that's what the framed furniture stuff is used for and it is worth it because to make this bookcase you would have six of these wooden planks and some and three of these slabs and then to make the framed stuff it would cut the cost almost in half basically so it will save you a bunch of resources if you go through the frame process and then uh, create these types of things next we have these frame chests and now i'm going to go ahead and set down two of these you can see it has this kind of label area in front if we go ahead and take our screw gun and we shift and right click we'll select the first chest and if we shift and right click second it will connect the both of them and now of course it'll just be a normal chest but what happens is it'll pick the most valuable item in the chest or the one that has the most uh, numbers on it as you can see the glass is the one that is showing and then if you put you know some other stuff in here on the other side wherever eventually the other one will show up so just kind of if you set it up correctly and move things around and you put you know a bunch of items in there it will show you what is in the chest give you kind of a quick uh, sneak peek if you're just glancing at the chest next we have a fancy sign now this is uh, pretty self-explanatory if we shift and right click on it we can then you know type in whatever we're wanting to do just like that and we can change you know the text scale if we're wanting it you know to be bigger so if i came back here you can see that it is a much bigger text you can change the format and you can go to different lines you can see this on line number seven so it's got all that different type of stuff and then of course it'll place it there so it's basically a sign except it gives you a little bit more variation and it looks a little bit better and so the other feature of this sign, if I go ahead and open it up, I can place blocks in these sections and you, don't, you can see it will appear up on the sign. And so if I place the obsidian in the other section, you can see it covers up the glass, but that is because I have not set uh, where the position of that block where I'm wanting it to be. So if I go ahead and right click on this section, I will be able to control where I'm wanting this block to go. So I can go ahead and move it over there. And as you can see, the glass block is now appearing. I can make it shrink or get bigger, whatever I'm wanting to do. I can make it centered, make it left, you know, just to give a little bit of variation of 3D, of the 3D look. And then, of course, I can do the exact same with the obsidian if I switch over to that. I can move it left, right, up, down, whatever, make it much bigger, make it much smaller, whatever. So just a little more customization, of course, to your sign. Next, we have this fancy workbench. And now this adds a very cool and interesting new mechanic, and that is recipes. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put the recipe in for a beacon, as you can see as such. And now if I were to click this, it will save the recipe to this blank book. And so of course I can make the beacon. And as you can see, when I place this recipe in that slot, it will show me what I need to be able to make this beacon. And it will show you recipe beacon. So you can go through a big list and it'll just tell you a bunch of different things that you need to make this particular item. And then you can also load the components from your inventory into the crafting table. So it is very handy so you don't have to go clicking around for all those items. And then this fancy workbench does have a place to store all these recipes. 
But there is a very cool other feature that it has involving the bookcase. If I were to go ahead and set down this bookcase next to it, as you can see, and then I go to an empty hand. Now it will show the bookcase's inventory when I open the workbench. So as you can see on the right bookcase, which doesn't have any books, it will just show the two inventory slots. And now I can place recipe books in there as well. And the left, it will show a bunch of different books. So if you place it around bookcases, you can have a bunch of recipes available to you whenever you open up the workbench GUI. Very handy. And also you can see the book that I placed there is now there in the other bookcase. So since we're on the topic of bookcases, I might as well go over this famous book of Redstone Volume 1 by James Maxwell. Of course, the amazing spy from the show Get Smart. Now to make this, you're going to take your Redstone Torch and a book to get this book. And now I'm going to open this up and you can title the book. And I'm also going to let you be able to pause this and read this because I'm basically going to be summarizing up what this is saying here in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click on the bookshelf to place the book in there. And then I'm gonna place some redstone coming out here. Now you can also already see that the redstone is powering up because of how this book works. So this book, starting in this slot over here and moving all the way across over to this slot, goes from one to 16 and increases in that strength of a redstone signal. So if you pay attention to the redstone, which is kind of hard to see on the side, if I go ahead and place it at 16, you can see that it gets much brighter because it has a much stronger signal coming out. So whenever this book is pulled away from this bookcase, that goes away. So you, of course, can you can use this for that type of hidden passage, have sticky pistons open up, and then you can go through another passage when this book is removed, as it does in you know the old classic movies. So last and pretty self-explanatory, we have the oak potion shelf. Now, if we go ahead and set this down and right click on it, a GUI will pop up and we can place our potions in here ever wanting. And now we can also place our potions on here just simply by placing it in a slot. You just look at the slot. And now, if you're wanting to take a potion off, very simple, you just shift and right click on that potion. You have to look at it. You can't look at the border, the top, the wood or anything. You have to look specifically at the center of the potion. So it's a little glitchy sometimes, but it still works and it's very cool. So now we're moving on to our next list of furniture here, starting off with a tool rack. Now to make this, you're just gonna take an iron ingot, surround it by wooden slabs. To make the label, you're just gonna take six wooden slabs. To make the desk, you're gonna take a torch, a feather, three wooden slabs, and two wooden planks. And just as a quick reminder, if you're to make the frame version of the desk, you're just gonna take the slabs, replace it with boards, the planks replace it with the sheets, but you'll still place the torch and feather on top as such. To make the table, you're gonna take uh, three wooden slabs and two wooden planks. To make the seat, it will be a wooden pressure plate, two sticks, a slab, and white wool. To make the oak clock, you're gonna take six wooden slabs, a clock, a stick, and a golden ingot. And to make this map frame, you're going to take a wooden slab surrounded by sticks. And finally, to make this oak case, we're gonna take a white wool, a glass, and surround it by wooden slabs. So with all the stuff in my inventory, I'm wanting to go over the seat back types for these seats. So you're gonna start off by making just a regular oak seat back. And to make this, you're just gonna take uh, six sticks with a white wool and a sl wooden slab. Then to make this type of seat back, you're gonna take a white wool and a wooden slab. To make this type, it's gonna be two sticks, a oak wooden slab, a white wool. To make this one, you're gonna take that normal, any type of wood that you made it out of, that type of seat back and just put it with a wooden slab. And to make this kind of grand chair seat back, you're gonna take two wooden slabs with any type of seat back that you made. So starting with this tool rack, if we go ahead and set it down and we shift right click on it with an empty hand, we can open up the GUI and place our stuff in here. But you can also just use your normal hand and right click on it and it'll place it in the empty slot. Now you have to look at the empty slot to place it. Same thing for taking it off. You just look at the slot and you will take those items off. Next we have our wooden label and if we go ahead and set it down and then we shift right click, we can open it up and see the label and we can place whatever we're wanting in there and then it will place those corresponding as such in the label. Next, we have the desk. If we go ahead and set it down and then we right click on it, we'll get this inventory that we can use. And now on the side, you can't place anything like this. You can only place books and then you can use recipes here and all that, but it will also show the books in nice, beautiful colors on the back of the desk. It looks very cool. And you can use this desk to hold other things like the typewriter, which I'll get into in a little bit. Next, we have our table. If we go ahead and set it down, you can see it's not that big, but it's still a table. Now this does not have any GUI. How this works is you just basically place down on the table what you're wanting to set, then of course you can take it off. So you'll use this for, you know, dining plates and all that stuff, which I'll get into uh, later in the mod. Next we have the oak seat. Now we can go ahead and set this down. And if we click on this with an empty hand, we can sit on it. 
but we are also going to go ahead and place i'm going to use the biggest and most obvious seat back if we just go ahead and right click on it you'll see that it places that seat back on seat now if i were to go ahead and use uh, the screw gun or the hand drill and just right click on the seat it will take that seat back off but if I shift and right click on this leg, it will change the seat back and it'll rotate it around. So you can place it however you want uh, according to your table or whatever you need. Next we have the oak clock. So we're gonna go ahead and set it down. Now this looks pretty cool by itself, but you can make a grandfather clock by shift and right clicking another one on top and then shift and right clicking with the screw gun on both of them. As you can see, it connects it. And now we have a grandfather clock. Now if I go ahead and shift and right click on this with an empty hand, it opens up the GUI. Now we can toggle the ticking sound on or off, whatever we're wanting, I'm gonna leave it off for now. Then we have chimes. Now I can turn the chime sound on as you can see, and the green circle on the chime sound has now lit up. And so this means that whenever and I'm gonna go ahead and place some circles there because using these presets on the left side, whenever the time the main hand hits one of those green circles, it will make the chime sound. So you'll probably hear it go off when I'm uh, talking. And now if I use different presets, you can see it spaces them out differently or it just clears them in general. But I can also go in and just click and place them wherever I'm wanting to alert me at whatever time that I'm needing it to. But we also have redstone in this. Now, I also have the different presets, and that's what the inner circle's for. It's for the red, and the outer one is for the green, very Christmassy colors. Now, how the redstone works, if I go ahead and space it out like this, when the clock or the hand hits that particular redstone dot, it will produce a redstone signal. Now, you can turn this on or off, and as you can see, the red bulb now lights up. Then you can also change whether it's pulse or it stays solid. Now, if it's selected solid, and I were to just place like one redstone dot or two here, when the hand hits those, it will produce a non-stop redstone current and it, it'll just never stop unless you have the pulse on. The pulse, when it hits the, when the hand hits the redstone dot, it will produce a redstone pulse that lasts a couple of seconds and then will refresh and happen again when it hits the next red dot. So when it's solid, just remember if you have one and it, and it hits that eventually, then it will stay on forever, basically, until you turn the redstone function off. So it's very cool that you can customize that, and I'll give you a quick example, setting up and matching it with the time of my current world so that I can show you the redstone pulse in action. So I've just set up a little system here with a redstone lamp, and now this will eventually go off, you'll hear a chiming sound, and the redstone will come on. Now it is set to solid, so I, even if I go ahead and just get rid of these, when it comes on, it will stay on, and I'll show you that in here when it happens in just a second. So there we go. It hit the particular spot, you can hear the chime that it makes, and the redstone lamp turns on. So even though it's after the time, it is still remaining on because the solid option is on. If I go ahead and turn it to pulse, once I come out in just a second, since we're past the redstone section, you can see that it then turns off. Next, I'm going over the wooden map. Now, go ahead and set it down. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can place a map inside of it. Now, you can use a screw gun or hand drill to remove it from the frame. You can also shift and right-click to rotate the map around multiple times. Now, this also introduces two new items of the compass. To make this, you just take compass and place some four gold ingots around it, and a drafting compass. Now, this takes two sticks and three iron ingots. Now, a compass is pretty self-explanatory. If, if I come over here, shift and right-click, I'll set my current location just to make it easy and type in here and click accept. Now this compass is set to that location. So if I right click, it will display that in the chat for everyone to see. Now I can shift and right click and you know change it again. As you can see, the numbers will change and then I can right click and display my new uh, location with everyone else. So that's pretty much it for the compass. Now the drafting compass uses the map in the mapping frame. Now if I go ahead and right click on the map, it's a little glitchy, it doesn't have the GUI behind it, but I can choose a different color for my waypoint pin and accept it. And as you can see, the waypoint pin, it's kind of hard to see, but it's the blue dot in the center of the map there. I'm also gonna add another one, let's make it, uh, I'm gonna make it a dark color or a more obvious color, there we go. Now you can see the dark dot that is on the map frame right there. Now if I go ahead and take an empty compass, not the one that has the here there, and I come up here and I right click on that waypoint, it will set that waypoint to, to this compass so that I can also then share this for other people to reach that section. So very cool to put information on the map and then take it off and put it onto these compasses. Last but not least, we have this oak case. And now to use this, you're just gonna go ahead and place it down. Now to open it, it doesn't do anything if you right click, you have to shift and right click. 
And then if I get to go ahead and just uh, right click with an empty hand, it only has one slot for me to place something in like this diamond pickaxe, as you can see there. And then if I right click just on the pickaxe, it will pull it out or I could just right click with something else and then place it in. So as you can see, it would fill up full space with this diamond, even though the diamond is usually a small item. But that is it for the case. I can, you know, then shift and right click again to close it. You can see it through the top. And it's just a very cool thing to protect, you know, that's very expensive items. And this can also be used with something called the lock and key, which I'll get to uh, a little bit later in the review. So moving on to our third chest, we have a little bit different of a change here. We instead have a bunch of cool different items instead of just like all the wooden uh, furniture blocks and stuff. But we're gonna start up here with these oak painting frames and such. Now, there are four different types of painting frames. We have single tier, double tier, triple tier, quadruple tier. Now, these can all be made with their uh, different respective woods. And of course, all you're gonna do is change the type of wood in the recipe to make the other type of frame. But to make the single tier, you're gonna take a painting frame and surround it by your type of wooden slab. Now to make the painting frame, you're just gonna take a cross of wooden slabs with a stick around it. Now this is just oak wood. There's no like uh, different color or different types of wood to make this frame. To make the double tier, you're gonna take a oak painting frame, put four wooden slabs and then four sticks as such. To make the triple tier, you're gonna take a painting frame, two wooden slabs, and then six sticks. And to make the quadruple tier, you're gonna take just the painting frame and surround it by sticks. And then to make a painting canvas, which you're gonna place in these frames, you're gonna take a wool, four string, and four sticks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and quadruple and the single to show you the difference. And then we have a printing press. And now to make this, you're gonna take a painting, surround it with iron ingots, and on the bottom, put a block or three blocks of iron go ahead and take all of these now if I go ahead and set this down you can see that it looks pretty beefy and if I go ahead and right click on this and place a painting canvas in there there are a couple of custom paintings from the bibliocraft mod then you have your classic vanilla paintings or custom ones and then in here you can place a uh, links and GUIs and all that stuff to fill up these spaces and it'll place that PNG on this printing canvas it does have to be a PNG format then if I go ahead and I'm just gonna choose like these boats here and I'm gonna click transfer. Now that is on this painting canvas, as you can see, it says sea of portals. I'm gonna go ahead and take this. And then next, if I go ahead and place up these uh, painting frames, I'm gonna do it on the tree so it's a little bit easier to see. Now there is a single tier and there is a quadruple tier frame. Now. The difference, if I get very close, with the single tier, you can see that's just a border of wood, but with the quadruple tier, you can see that it has many different layers. It has this inner darker layer, then two bigger layers, and then has a final outer darker layer. So it adds just a little bit of texture and difference to your frames if you'd like that. Now, with this painting canvas, I'm gonna go ahead and place it in. As you can see, it's pretty self-explanatory. It places the painting in the frame. But if I go ahead and right click on the frame, and now you can use your hand drill or screw gun to remove the painting, I can also change the scale, the resolution, and the ratio. Now this will also change the size of the painting. So if I you know, do a little bit uh, bigger of a scale, you can see that's now a three by three painting. Now it does look a little weird because you know there's one frame right there uh, and there's nothing else, so it's just kind of sticking out. But you can also place this in other frames. Now you don't have to set it up like this. You can also use these white blocks up here. This will place it in that particular position that the arrows are pointing. So as you can see, the frame or the green block, that's what the frame is, it's shooting the painting out in those directions. If I place it over here and then come out, you can see that changes the position and it will place the section of the painting in the other frames. So you can have this kind of tilted picture put together. Very cool. And you can of course change the resolution, make it uh, look better and all that stuff. As you can see, it add more detail right there. And then the aspect ratio will also change the size to a, a, enormous details. As you can see, this is a, a four by three aspect ratio. So it is all very cool. Then of course you can uh, just simply change the rotation of the picture and it'll also keep the aspect range, uh, ratio going around with the picture as well. So it is very cool, very bunch of customization and just adds so much better uh, stuff to the paintings in, uh, compared to normal vanilla Minecraft. And next we have all different colors of typewriters. Now starting with the white one, to make it you just take two iron ingots, a paper, two blocks of iron, an ink sack, and three white terracotta. Now to make a different color like the pink, you're just gonna place pink terracotta instead of the white one. So if I go ahead and just take uh, like a black typewriter and a bunch of paper, and then come over here to the desk, which also has a book open on top of it, which is the center slot of the desk. That's what it's used for. But I'm gonna go ahead and place down just the typewriter on top by shift and right clicking. 
And now it does look a little weird, especially with the books on the back, but you can shift and right click on this to change its position as such. And then to get it off, you just simply break it with uh, left clicking. But if I go ahead and place paper in here, it can hold up a stack of paper. And now if I were to just start typing by right clicking, you can see that it is typing out a book. And now once I finish, it will just kind of type out a random book. As you can see, this is Witch Silk by me, the Pumpkin King, since I typed it. And then it ha has just a kind of story talking about uh, Witch Silk. But uh, it, it that's all it really does. You can't really custom like typewrite it. That's a little unfortunate, but it will just make a bunch of random books and it does have a very cool model uh, to place on the desk. So next we have some sword pedestals. Now to make this, you're just going to take some stone slabs and surround it with a white wool and make a different color. All you're gonna do is change that color of wool. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab like a light blue one and I have a sword here to demonstrate. If I go ahead and set it down here and then just right click, it will place the sword in the pedestal as such. It looks very cool. And of course you can just right click to get it out of there. So very cool, very handy uh, storage thing. And then we have another very self-explanatory thing of armor stands. And this also does have a framed version of this all the different wooden versions as well. So you just got your slabs and then two sticks. I'm gonna go ahead and grab an oak one and then a bunch of armor as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place this armor on me to show a very cool feature of this stand. If I go ahead and set it down and then right click, you can see that I am wearing this armor. So it shows the armor that you're wearing and then you can take the armor on, off you and as you can see what's happening behind is that it will then place the armor on the armor stand as such. So just a very cool feature and it does look a little bit taller than the previous one. And of course this is wooden compared to the other type of metal looking armor stand that comes in vanilla Minecraft. Now we're moving on to our last chest. Now this just has a bunch of different random things and a lot of it very cool as well. Starting off with a desk bell to make it, you're gonna take a button, three iron ingots and a redstone. Then a tape measure to make this, you're gonna take a tape measure reel, surround it with iron ingots. To make the reel, it's just a surrounding a yellow, dandelion yellow die with a string. And then we have a disc rack. Now to make this, you're just gonna take any color of uh, wooden slabs with three sticks. And I've got a couple of discs to use that. So a desk bell is very simple. If you go ahead and right click on it, makes a nice little ding. This will also ding when a redstone signal is put to this small block. Then a tape measure, this is you know pretty handy for depending on your circumstance. If I go ahead and right click on this uh, area, it will start the measurement from there. And if I move away and you can see that the meter is going up, it's showing you how far away it is. And if I were to uh, select just this block right here, it will show you that that measurement is 11. So it is 11 blocks from that area to the block that I'm pointing at right there. So it has that little pull when you set it down to let you uh, know that, hey, that is the block that it is measuring from when I go ahead and select this one. And then also will tell you the direction of north and south, east and west. And then if you look up to the sky so you're not selecting anything, you can also change it to an absolute measurement. Now this just changes it a little bit. It will, instead of counting uh, north, south, east, west, it will go diagonally as well. So it is a little interesting. As you can see, it's six, so it'll go back and forth. But, so it's, uh, it's a little confusing, but it just allows you to basically go diagonally instead of north, south, east, and west. Next we have a disc rack. And now I'll go ahead and set this down. That's a little weird. Uh, go ahead and set it down. I can either shift and right click on this to uh, place the music discs as such. So as you can see, it will place it in that slot or I can just right click on the slot I'm wanting to and it'll place the disc in there. Very useful for just holding the disc. Now it doesn't make them round. It has that still oval look that it would if it was in your inventory as such. As you can see how it looks, but it is still very cool. Next we have a cookie jar. Now to make this, you're gonna take a cookie, a redstone and uh, four glass panes with an iron ingot. And then I've got some books in order to place in there. I'm gonna go ahead and set down this cookie jar. Now as you can see, it's empty. But if I were to go ahead and place some books in here as such, now it will disguise these books as cookies. So you can disguise, you know, diamonds or special books, whatever you're wanting in this cookie jar. And also, as you saw in the crafting recipe, that there is a redstone at the bottom. That means that whenever you right click on this cookie jar, a redstone pulse is uh, admitted. So if I go ahead and right click on this, you can see that the redstone on the side over here does turn on for a second as a pulse is happening. So you know you could have like a, put, a piston or something so that when someone opens it up, it pushes them into something or whatever. Just very cool so that you know when someone steals a cookie from the cookie jar, which could end up being a diamond as you as you, uh, it disguises it or you know a bunch of books, which aren't that special. 
Next we have a dinner plate, go ahead and set it down. Now this can hold uh, three different types of food. If I go ahead and click on it with an empty hand instead of uh, a full hand with a piece of food so it wouldn't place it on there. You can see that it will spread it out on the plate. And now how this works is that when you right click um, on the plate, when you're hungry, you'll take four clicks in order to eat a piece of food. So if I right click four times, and now it's not gonna work since I'm not hungry, but if I were hungry and then I right click, the three first clicks are basically chewing your food, and then the fourth click will consume it and fill you up, and then if you are still hungry after that, then you can continue eating, but if you're not, then you won't be able to eat at all, just like I am trying to click a bunch right now, and nothing's happening because I'm not hungry and I don't need food. And it also just looks very cool uh, to set down on the table that I talked about before. So next, we're getting into the last few items, and these uh, two pieces of furniture, the typesetting table and the printing press, get a little bit more complex, but it's also very cool. So the first step is the typesetting table. To make this, you're gonna take uh, any type of wood or even the cut pieces of wood, which are the uh, frame planks that you use to make those. Uh, so you're gonna take those, place three wooden slabs, two planks, a redstone, two iron ingots and a printing press chase. Now to make this, you're gonna just surround any color or type of wood uh, around an iron ingot or even the framing boards. So go ahead and take this. And then also a very cool feature is you can wear these glasses that allow you to uh, give you a little bit more information on what's going on. So there are three types of these. They all do the same thing of just reading glasses. Now this is two ink sacks, two glass panes and an iron ingot tinted uh, glasses, which are reading glasses and gray dye, and then a monocle, which is a golden nugget surrounding a glass pane. I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, just the tinted reading glasses, you know, so you look cool. And then I've got just a couple of books here, and I made just this stupid book called The Do, just for whatever, just so that I can copy this and show you how it works. So if I go ahead and set down this typesetting table, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take the print press chase, place it up here at the top, then I'm gonna place my book here in the section here. And now, since my book is red, that means that it is not saved to this table. And to access the GUI for the table, you're gonna select this kind of uh, slotted area. And then, as you can see, it has this book management section, and this is where your uh, books will be. Now, to save your book, you just simply uh, shift and right click on it. As you can see, it turns to blue. So if I come back here, you can now see that it is saved, Pumpkin King, the do. And now, I can make this private, meaning that only I can access and um, change this book or discard it. And then I can also select it so that it will be selected into this slot, so it's very handy. But also on the front, there's this area that looks very oddly like a button. That is because it's been designed to place a button there as it is very simple to use. So once you have these parts, if I go ahead and press this, I now have a printing plate, which I can use on the printing press. And I'll go over that in just a second. Next, we have these uh, tinted glasses. If I go ahead and place them on, not only do I look you know, amazing, but it will show me like the type of book that's there. So it'll show me the book of my name and then it's called The Do. Uh, but then also, very importantly, if I go ahead and take my book off just by right clicking and place an enchanted book down, it'll tell me what the book is as luck of the sea, it'll tell me it's enchanted book, and it'll tell me how many levels I need. This is 40 levels to be able to make a plate of this book to use in the printing press. And now these plates do have durability, so you know eventually you're gonna have to make a new plate to copy down books, but of course if you're making the books, it'll be very easy to place it back into this table and then make another plate of it. But with how OP it is to be able to uh, craft or duplicate these enchantment books, uh, not only do I believe that the uh, printing press um, plates go down faster, but also, as you can see, 40 levels, that's pretty expensive and it'll take quite a lot of killing mobs or just XP to be able to get that. But it is definitely worth it to be able to copy down these books. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to that printing press. Now to make it, you're just gonna need a blaze rod, two iron ingots, three blocks of iron, two uh, any different types of wooden slabs or the uh, frame pieces, and then a weighted pressure plate. I'm gonna go ahead and take that. You're also gonna want some books, obviously, to be able to copy stuff. You're gonna want some ink sacks and some more of those uh, printing press chases. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go ahead and set this down. Now to place this plate in it, we're gonna place it right here just by right clicking. And then we're gonna take our ink sacks and our book. Now to place the ink sacks, you're just gonna go ahead and uh, place them up there at the top. And now since I have my glasses on, it can show me how many ink sacks I have there. 
And then the books you'll just simply place here and it'll automatically place all the books there. And then it will automatically as well start working on copying these books. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait here just for a second and it will take uh, much longer to copy the enchanted books. But as you can see, now I have the do and I can go ahead and take this book off. And now I have another copy of the do in my inventory. So if I go ahead and when I remove that, it will now then just continually uh, copy these books down. It stops when the book is there. So I have to come and right click it to be able for it to continue uh, copying those books. So you do have to show up uh, and check it out a few times, but it also doesn't take extremely long, especially with normal books. As you can see, it happens pretty quickly. And now we're going over our last few things. We're gonna start with the clipboard. Now to make this, you're gonna take a feather, an ink sack, three pieces of paper, and a wooden pressure plate. Next we have this lock and key. Now this is creative mode only, so you can't craft it, but we're gonna go ahead and take that. Then we have this plumb line. Now to make this, you're gonna take a seven, uh, six string, excuse me, and a golden ingot, and you'll get this line. So with this clipboard in hand, if I go ahead and right click, I can label it of a uh, list of stupid things, whatever. Now if I run out of space, I'm gonna just keep typing a bunch of different things. But in my inventory, you can see that it is it will show the entire name, it won't run out of space. So just because you can't see it all doesn't mean that's not all there. So with this, you just kind of make a list of things. So if I'm wanting to uh, wash clothes, uh, if I'm wanting to uh, build the house, even though you should already have that done, I can now click on this and show me that it is done. I can show that, you know, it's not done, I need to do it, or I can just leave it blank. Now also you can shift and right click this and you can place this up. And a very cool thing is you can still use this even though it's in this situation. So if I go ahead and right click on this, you can see that I check mark those things when they're done so you don't have to break it or bring it back to your inventory or anything. So it is very handy. And now you might've noticed earlier that behind this tree, I do have a hole here. Now. I don't know how deep this is. It could be, you know, 20 blocks, five blocks, I don't know. But with this plumb line, if I go ahead and click right here, it will show me the depth and the Y uh, axis. So a very handy for measuring the uh, the depth of holes. So it shows me it's 11 blocks deep. And then finally with uh, this case, if I go ahead and open it, I'm just gonna place like a carrot in there, I don't know. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close it. I can lock this so it says it has been locked and now I will be able to open this still because I'm the one that locked it but if you're not you will not be able to open this. So very handy unfortunately it's only for creative mode and so you will need this key or whatever or uh, since I'm the person that locked it I can just open it of course but other people will not be able to. So very cool and very useful. And now as a quick reminder since I can't haven't really gone over it in a long time but it's still been there is that the screw gun and the hand drill can still be used to rotate things connect things or take things off without having to break them. So for example, with this, I can just go ahead and shift and right click and it rotates it. So it's very uh, simple. And then also I can just right click and it will change the axis so it goes up or down. Now you can do that with the, uh, the majority of these things in here, but of course you can just experiment with those uh, as you'd like. So we have three final things to go over in this mod. First, we have the slotted book by Sir Hidington. Now to make this, you're gonna take a book and quill with any type of label and then I'm gonna have some very special things to place in it. Now this, I can title it however I want, so I'm gonna put uh, nothing here. And then I can put whatever description I'm wanting. And now these, this book and the atlas, which I'll get to in just a second, seem to be pretty buggy for me. So the way that to put an item in here or, or, or to take it out, just shift and right click. Don't drag and drop it, it seems to bug out. I'll show you what happens in just a second. But if I go ahead and save this, nothing here. So it just looks like a normal book. I can change it uh, to whatever name I'm wanting. But if I right click on it, you can see that there are diamonds in there instead. So what I'm talking about with a little bit of bugginess, if I were to just take this uh, I, and then I'm trying to place it down, you can see that it's trying to space it out and just gets buggy and then it's stuck on my, uh, my mouse cursor and I can't do anything. And then I have to uh, close the book and then when I open it again, it gets thrown out of my inventory. It just, it's very funky. So I would recommend just doing shift and right click with this in the Atlas to move things uh, in and out just to avoid any of that bugginess and it's much easier to use. Now before we go over the Atlas, which is uh, just kind of the biggest book that that's added to this mod, I'm gonna go over to the stock room catalog. Now to make this, you're gonna take a book and quill, surround it with paper, and at the top put a cactus green die. And then I'm also gonna take some compasses as they are used in this book. Now how this book works, it's just basically a big catalog. So if you're wanting to add chests to this catalog, you just shift and right click on a chest and you'll see this kind of uh, particle effect come out showing the catalog. And now this will show you that that chest is marked by the catalog. 
So if I go ahead and right click, it will now show you all the things that are in that chest. Now I can change it by the number, uh, by the count of the number, and as you can see, there's only one of everything, or I can put it in alphabetical order and then flip through the pages, and then you can search for whatever you're wanting, uh, alphabetical order or number wise. And then also you can, you know, go to the top and change it. So if I just wanted to say stock room, I can make it do that. So that is what the stockroom catalog is. It just allows you to be able to access uh, all your chests information very quickly. And then of course, if you're not wanting a chest to be on here, all you have to do is come up and right shift and right click on it again, and it will go away. So another cool feature are the compasses that can be used in this book. So if I go ahead and click on the chest symbol on the side, uh, so I'm wanting to know, you know, what the oak case is in. So this will show me, give me a couple of uh, useful things to know where that chest is. So if I have an empty compass in my inventory, I can select which compass I'm wanting. Then if I press add, it will add these coordinates to that compass. Then you know you can use on the map, uh, map frame that I talked about before, or just share it with other people uh, as well. So it tells you, you know, the coordinates, it tells you what type of chest. So this is a crystal chest using the iron chest mod. You should go check out that mod review. And this number here on the side also tells me the uh, the amount of this item that I have, just in case, you know, I didn't see it. So I clicked on the oak case, and so I only have one, so I only have one there. If I go to 16, you can see that that number changes to 16 as well. And it'll tell you what it is. So this is a button, so I have three buttons, or I have, you know, 64 uh, print press chases. So then also if I go to my inventory and I have this compass, now if I right click, like I talked about before, it will tell me there's an oak case in the crystal chest at those coordinates for someone else to go and find as it is in the inventory. So it is very useful and handy to keep track of your stuff. But finally, I'm gonna go over the atlas. Now to make this, you're gonna take a slotted book, drafting compass, an empty map, and six paper on the side. Now you can make an internal atlas by taking, uh, it doesn't say it, but it is a, you have to find these. Uh, it is over here, an internal compass enchanted book. And so if you place two of those, an atlas that you already made, two compasses and four ender pearls, that will allow you to never lose this atlas when you die, it'll always be with you and keep your previous information. So it is very handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this with a bunch of maps since that's what an atlas is and a compass. So now since I have these things in my inventory, if I go ahead and hold the atlas, it will display a map. Now this is the previous map that I tested, that's why it's showing it, but this will change. If I go ahead and open it up, you can see it gives you some information of the map center, all that stuff. You can zoom, you can have an auto center, all that type of stuff. So if you have a compass with a waypoint on it, if you go ahead and shift and right click, uh, it will place it in this bottom slot. That's what that is for, the compasses, and it will place that waypoint on your atlas. Very handy. And then also, if uh, now this will be a little buggy, but I'll go ahead and just kind of place these maps around here. I'm having to click multiple times. As I've said before, it's a little buggy. As you can see, if I come down here, it's you know doing the same thing that I did with the diamonds, but I'm gonna go ahead and place all these out here. So it'll give me just a second. So there we go, I placed all the maps in there. And now if I were to uh, kind of zoom in, zoom out a little bit here, just to refresh this, if I zoom out, you can see that it has this very small area of this atlas, which is the uh, area that I'm in. If I go ahead and you know change direction, works as a normal map, and then fly around, you can see that this holds a lot of space as it has a ton of maps inside of it. So I'm not gonna fly around too far because it, to fill up this map, it would take forever. That's why it's an atlas. It holds a bunch of different uh, maps together. But one final feature uh, of this atlas, you know, and also I can you know zoom in back to be able to see where I'm at. You can see some lava lakes around, all that stuff. So very handy, just give you a bunch of customization. Zoom out a little bit more, you can see. And then it'll also show you the maps that have been charted on. So as you can see, it's working its way up when I'm moving around. And so you can also take those maps out pretty obviously. But then we also have another feature, and this is pretty similar to the uh, frame, uh, the, mapping, the mapping frame that I talked about before, where it allows you to add uh, different waypoints, or this button here will place the waypoint on a compass on your map. You can place some pins around and add waypoints there, change the color of it, all that stuff. So it's the exact same as the uh, uh, f mapping frame where you place a map on it, use the drawing compass, and you can customize a little bit more. And then to go back to a normal mouse, you just click on the mouse symbol. 
So very useful, very customizable, very handy as well, instead of having to hold just a bunch of different maps in your inventory. So it is uh, just super useful. Unfortunately, it is got that little bit of bugginess, and so it's a little bit more difficult to use and set up. I hope they fix that, or I don't know if it's just me, but it is still pretty awesome. Well, that's pretty much it for the Bibliocraft mod. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask me so that I can help answer them for you. And if you like this mod review, leave a like, comment down below any other types of mods you'd also like me to review. And I'll see you all in the next video. High five.